Hello, everybody. Welcome back to indeed a very special episode of Esoteric Atlanta. I know I say that all the time, but I'm very, very, very excited about this episode because today you are going to, I don't want to say my secret weapon. I'm going to say one of humanity's accidental secret weapons that was accidentally stumbled upon which we'll get into but first of all i'm here you guys know emmy my one of my good friends emmy and now i'm joined with a, a new good friend of mine through emmy named holly but before we get into the episode at hand i am going to show you guys and remind you guys to go over and give emmy a subscription uh, subscribe at holistic genie with emmy and holly also has a channel so we're starting to get hollies out there Holly from Qu Quintessence Healing Arts. I hope I said that right. I have been watching some of your videos, Holly, and I'm so, so excited that you're putting yourself out there on the YouTubes because even though this equipment perhaps was created for our demise, is being used, <clears throat> what, whatever the, the devil will make for bad, God will use for good. And that's going to be kind of one of the themes of this, this episode today. And so with that being said, I'm going to pass the ball to Emmy and let Emmy take it from here. Okay. So <clears throat> don't mind my uh, feral homeschool <laughs> child over here. <laughs> Can you stay back there for about an hour, sweetie? Life of a homeschool mom, homeschool working mom. I'm Whatever. jealous. I'm I want to be him. I want to be that young buck child. Just <laughs> of of no all. shirt long hair <laughs> just just what but that's who we are in our purest form anyway right who we were as children so right. he's adorable he's precious <laughs> so i would like to introduce my very good friend holly i'm you're going to be on tv recording i'm recording do you absolutely have to go through i need everyone to go faster okay hold on you guys Okay, hurry. Holly, many people think that we secretly are in like Hollywood production studios, but I think we we prove time and time again that we're literally in our home. <laughs> prove that wrong. Prove that wrong. And, and, we're, yes, we yes. Are. <laughs> and where my office is is like it okay. We live in a really old farmhouse and we converted the three car garage into more living space. And so this used to be the mud room. So all the bedrooms in the living room in the back have to come through this room to get to the rest of the house, the kitchen and everything. So, and it's the only place that I could have my office. So it's like, whatever. <laughs> you know, God has a sense of humor, I will say. I mean, have you seen some humans? God has a sense of humor. So, <laughs> so that's just one of them. So, and anyway, well, your children are adorable, Emmy. So, well, thank you. I, I used to say thanks. I made them myself, but I had a little <laughs> help. <laughs> they came through my portal. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Well, okay. So, pardon the in interruptions. I'll probably have one more, but um, I'll, I'll introduce Holly in, in between. So, this is my good friend, Holly. Um, I know we're soul sisters because when we met, I felt like I knew her my entire life my entire life. In fact, the very first time we got together, we had an amazing astral experience. Holly has this really cool um, copper pipe pyramid in her uh, healing room with this giant pillow in there. And um, it was just an amazing experience. I was sitting under the, under the pyramid and just so much energy and and we exchanged and it was just really beautiful it was like there is no way i don't know this lady there's no way it was it was incredible and that was was it 2020 was it february of 2020 or 2021 was it right before i think 2021 2021 okay so it's only okay. been a couple years that we've actually known each other in in this physical life um but she, Holly is one of my closest friends now. In fact, I went through a bit of a, um, not a bit of a transition. I went through a major transition. I, I basically um, lost all except for a couple of my friends 
you know, as you go through a spiritual awakening, you just find that you don't resonate with certain people anymore and and you are drawn to others and and Holly is one of my um inner circle friends in real life and um she is definitely my go-to if I have anything weird going on and <laughs> and I tell you what she has really really helped me to step into um my capabilities and my abilities and just to trust and have faith like literally anything is possible we can do anything so long as we believe we are that powerful and we are and it you know it's just it's just a process and a matter of unlearning all of the programming and conditioning that we have um, been exposed to our entire lives and anyway i'm digressing but um mm. holly has um holly does amazing energetic work amazing spiritual work um and her house it feels like you're walking into a hug like it's that energetically clear like it is like you can she's not in her head she knows she knows she does a lot of work around her house i pull in and i pull into her driveway and it's just like oh, okay <laughs> i'm good <laughs> i'm safe so how was that for an introduction was that <laughs> was that okay <laughs> beautiful emmy um so if you could share um how i came to know bryce through you okay all right what was going on there before you go on i just feel like i have we have to call holly dr woo woo because i feel like she's the physician of the of the quantum I feel okay, like hey, I I'm love like, it. Guys, when when Emmy said she's powerful, I when what she did for me, I was like, girl knows what she's doing. I was like, she's a zero up. She's a storm. I was like, she's a zero <laughs> up. I am super galactic, you know, cosmic based. And I have had interactions with otherworldly beings, innerworldly beings elementals you name it i've i have story after story after story <laughs> to to share but i embrace it all i love it the more woo woo the better I and i'm, I'm, I'm like, like just bring it on you know you're a physician of the you're this have you seen american horror story season three i know guys no. i know people that do that are bad guys but you can learn a lot well they have the supreme out of this like coven of girls, I'm like Holly's the supreme. <laughs> like she, she's the supreme. She, she, I listen. All right, I digress though. I just have to say that that might have been Magdalene you. Joke, saying she's she's Doctor Woo Woo. Like she she this. I love that. I love it. It's <laughs> awesome. I love it too. I think it, I think it fits quite well. <clears throat> so, um, uh, Bryce's channel was uh, having some issues and um her her numbers were stuck and the views on her videos were just really low and it wasn't anything um with the algorithms with youtube and so we just couldn't i, I was trying to figure out how i could help with reiki and i just i was just like i just i just don't know and so i was like i was like oh let me let me contact holly let's do that and the first thing that we did was um we got together me and holly and her husband and did a clearing and a protection um over bryce the person and then holly did um work over several sessions like three or four now isn't it uh, three at least three um <clears throat> for her social media for her youtube channel and um it it now, correct me and add if, if I'm not saying this right, but you were um, working on the potential black magic, the AI, um, anything nefarious that could have been um, affecting or infecting her channel. Is that a pretty good yep. description? Yeah. And also your demonic attacks 
that were, it was definitely black magic. It was definitely, they were using the AI technology uh, that they have found a way to manipulate. And so we basically, when Emmy came over and my husband, Rob, um was here and we created our own energetic triad and we put you in the center and what trans you know once we combined our energy and i everything i channeled i channeled the whole process um i'm not sure from where it came from but it was high up and i do remember um between you yourself and your social media we ha we were i was instructed to go all the way to the 22nd dimension and down to zero point that's how infected and manipulated your life and social media were that many levels 22 dimensions worth so that was our first session <laughs> you know i mean it was intense very intense but it was through that process that i you know i had started looking at my own because it had never taken off and i'd been on social media for like eight years and doing all kinds of stuff and it never just crossed my mind i really didn't have that much connection with witches or dark magic other than well i won't even get into that but <laughs> so anyway i do know in past lives i have been witches before mostly good healing type ones but that's not my focus in this life i have i have no i don't want to go there but um I do know I am a, yes, I'm a healer, really galactic, but one of my main things is I am a warrior. I have no problem. I'm a cosmic warrior. On every level, I'm a warrior. And I have had no problem taking down whatever. I've even been contacted by some secret alien based lab down in flagstaff arizona that's an interesting story Very but so i mean i've had dealings with government you know secret government stuff and alien stuff and galactic federation of worlds and it just so many things but um and i also uh, discovered in in my awakening journey i was um one of those secret space program taken against my will for 50 years they got me for nothing and i was a warrior i in fact i was told my nickname was the destroyer i was like okay then so um, now that, uh, you know, that that was brought to my awareness, I, I kind of delved in that to a little bit and put stop that. But some of that training has come back to me uh, into my awareness that I now use. Um, Emmy, I had taught uh, one aspect of that, and that was this special etheric net that is programmable. And uh, she's been using it with great success. And um, anyway, so I am a warrior and I have no problem taking down anything and everything dark and being the protector, let's say, um, of other light workers and their missions. I've worked with grids. I've worked with Lemurian uh, crystal skulls. I've um, just so many, 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 many areas. The dragons, 
cats to you name it. So anyways, I am here to, um, I, because of Bryce's, you know, my experience with Bryce. And then I had another lady over in Great Britain who, who is another light worker and was having similar issues and I helped her too. And then that's when I realized, oh my gosh, this is, this is a global thing. And, and the target is we light workers who are here to, you know, not only assist each other, but to help awaken the rest of humanity and, and heal and guide and coach and mentor and whatever it is that our soul mission is. So I just recently, actually within days, um, I was uh, woke up with the message, you need to create a service to do this thing, uh, to remove uh, uh, the interfering AI technology. There, I have implemented a, a special, um, it looks like a computer chip, and it was created... Uh, during a conversation with um, my friend Sarah that we often do channeling together and <laughs> the ETs and they just line up whenever we're together but um, there was the need and I didn't even know this was going on at the time but um, I was contacted by I think it was prime creator of the light that said well, this needs to be done. So we combined our three energy, the three of us at that time, energy, and created a, it looked like a, a foot long, foot square, crystalline uh, computer chip, basically. And it was, and, and it is filled with source energy. And um, it, it essentially was implanted into our internet all of it the dark net the the internet to undo all the nefarious practices that the dark side was, were using um the ai components of the internet against us so that has now been implanted and it slowly you know, undoing and changing and, um, and, and it's divine enough and uh, powerful enough that it literally can input, it can rewrite the circuitry. It can put in, uh, it's, it's sentient. It is sentient. And it can put in uh, like viruses and malware and cause dysfunctions. And then it just rewrites. So that is quietly going back. And that we can also uh, tap into that for anyone who hears this and knows of that divine crystalline technology that's now implanted into the internet that they can... Um, like a call for its help, you know? So that's also available. And I also uh, tap into that as well when I'm dealing with now the dark magic <laughs> aspects in, in people's social media. So um, back to when I woke up uh, just two days ago and I had said so to, to the universe, you know, so you want me to do this as a surface service? And I said, so what do I call it? You know, and it's like my head split open and this white light came down and it said infinite solutions. I'm like, okay. But I changed the um the the spelling around um a little bit, but it still sounds the same. So anyways, that's coming into effect. I haven't even put it on my website yet, but um, I'm excited to do yet another service. And um, there's, okay, so enough of that. Um, 
Bryce, tell me uh, from your perspective and your experiences, you know, what you started with and how after our work we did uh, helped. Well, I was shooketh after the first time, if I can say that word shooketh. And people, I mean, I, I'm, I gave, before Emmy went to speak with Holly, I remember giving Emmy full permission to tell Holly everything that I had been through. And there are things that I have been through with this coven. Um, it is a coven. They are in our community on YouTube pretending to be of the light. They are not. Um, this coven has stolen my birth chart. Almost killed me when that happened. I have a friend here in Atlanta at that point who helped break that. Um, they have stolen all of my money through my AdSense. I have a file with the FBI. I've had to fill out four different affidavits with the military. I've had to speak with secret servant agents. I mean, this is serious what's happened. These people are high ranking control cabal members, we'll say black sorcerers. Um, they, I, I, I know and, and things that Holly channeled confirmed stuff that I had been told uh, through there was a contract that was taken out on me through the cabal a contract of destruction it's been and Emmy can tell you I've had moments where I've been on my knees feeling like just giving up because the abuse and the torture has just been non-stop and I haven't said this on my channel yet but I'm feeling prompted to say this because I feel like this is a very raw episode one of the things that has happened to me i won't go into details but one night i was assaulted sexually by an entity i know that might sound crazy to people i'm not going to say the extent of what happened it was bloody um somebody else was here with me and witnessed the whole thing and was very good during that time and i was screaming for the because i wanted to end it it was so painful and this person uh, also spoke with the military and also witnessed for me because, the, the believe it or not, guys, the military does know about, they are associated with the Luciferian Brotherhood. They are working with Lucifer, directly under Lucifer, with demons that were, are literally right-hand men. And these are people who are on YouTube, who have big platforms in the truther community, right? And so there were taught my, again, all my money was stolen. Um, I know there have been poverty spells put on me. I know that there have been at least five different death spells put on me. Um, I know that I've had um, a military person following me at one point for my own protection. I was told I never saw the person. They told me I wouldn't, but that I had a guard watching. Oh, God. Um, and I got to the point, some day, most days I have a pretty good sense of humor about it all. Like, uh, we were laughing before we came on you know you're on the right track when this shit starts happening to you. Like, you know that you know you're doing, in some ways, they're kind of screwing themselves over because they're just proving you right. Um, and it's because of this experience, I did understand why I have uh, such a target on my back. It's not just, it's, it's my connection to Magdalene. It's my, that led to my research. I know Magdalene came through a lot. I know she always comes in with Emmy's channelings with me. Um, so there's a bigger, and we talk about the different dimensions, there's a bigger, a bigger war at play than our lower selves in this third dimension even realize. And so I want to express that to people watching because Holly, I, and I think Emmy can, can verify this. We have like the coolest viewers, like everybody that watches my channel, Emmy's channel are so freaking cool. Yeah, we get the trolls. LOL. We see you coven. We know that's you. We see you. You're, you're not that smart. You're smart, but you're not that smart. But most of our viewers here are just so freaking cool. And they're so enlightened and spiritually aware. We have this great support group on Signal. And it is like a bunch of people that are just like us. That and Nothing's off limits. And so I want to specifically speak to those people where you feel like something is wrong, but your logical mind is saying, but I don't see is this in my, like, you know, like your logical mind is kind of having that friction with your inner knowing. And what I want to say is you heard a Holly say 22 different dimensions, your soul, the essence of your consciousness is so much bigger than the body you were in. Go with your gut feeling. This brain is on, only exists as an organ 
to help you survive in this dimension. It's not supposed to help you understand the other dimensions. It's only function is for this dimension. So go with your gut. And I told Emmy, I was, that was the thing that frustrated me the most out of everything was that I put 16 hours plus a day into the content on this channel because I love it. I love researching the missing books of the Bible. I love uncovering all these stories. I love, I just released the Robert Wan story. I want to find justice for this guy. Like I love doing that and having a channel with like 50,000 subscribers and getting less than a thousand views of video is not mathematically possible. And I, I don't put anything that's potent to YouTube on YouTube. I put it on Rumble. You guys know that. So nothing on my YouTube channel would pick up the algorithms. And so I knew also being stuck at a certain number once you get over a certain number on YouTube isn't mathematically possible either. It will continually. Can I say it too? I was watching for about a week. I just, you know, when I go uh, watch a video or continue a video, I just like peak and from day to day, it was up and down by like three to 500, three to 500 people. It's like, that is just really weird. Like, how do you go down? How do you lose 200 subscribers and then get 300 the next day? That is just so strange. Yeah. That's not normal. You know, that's not normal activity, right? <laughs> I yeah, mean, no. you know, that's just really strange. And then once Holly did what she did, well, when, yeah. after we got together and then she did what she did with uh, your YouTube channel, um, literally within a week. Oh, mom, she did everything. When, well, and I, 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 it hit me one day. I think I said to you, Emmy, I'm like, okay, if they can send an entity to my house to physically rape me where another person is having to watch this happen. I mean, the person who was here that watched that situation happen probably has more trauma from the situation than I do. And I know I've not talked about that yet on, the, on camera. And I, I, I will say for about a week there, I was sitting on a, a special ring. I had bloody underwear for a week, guys. It was bad. And the person that witnessed that saw it all and had to witness to the being. I know who it was. I know who raped me. It was a person that's here on YouTube that you think is a female and is not a female. But this female likes to say everybody else is, is transgender and they're not. She is. Okay. And so this person had to also go and witness. So this is not just me. This There's witnesses to this. I actually have like three witnesses on my affidavits for everything that's happened. And so it finally hit me. And I was like, Emmy, I think that my, my YouTube is being spellcasted. If they can send, if they can do all these horrific things to me, who's to say they can't spell cast my YouTube as well? And we started talking. I was like, because that's the thing, guys. We all know we're light workers, but we didn't come in with manuals. <laughs> we had to learn how to tie our shoes. Like, you know, like nobody's, it's it, learn as you go. It's, it's figure it out as you go. And so Emmy was like, she had done some Reiki on me, which was amazing because you verified for me, Emmy, that I had a being to the right of me that was just bright light, huge being that was protecting me. You also realize that Magdalene and Yashua were there protecting my second chakra, which somebody else, another healer in another country also picked up on that as well because they use sex magic, right? What happened to me? I got raped. They're using forced sex magic to pull life essence from you. Where else is my prana going? Where else is my life essence going? It's going to the work I put up on YouTube. It's my heart and soul that I'm putting up on YouTube to try to help. So what's happening is they're spell casting it so that I'm literally talking to myself. So many people would tell me, oh, I, after Holly did, did what she did, did her surgery on my channel, <laughs> we'll call her Dr. Woo Woo, did her surgery on my channel. Uh, people were emailing me and be like, oh my God, I thought you were off YouTube and then your channel popped back up again. I went from getting 500 views back up to 30,000 views again. And then of course they hit again. So of course they were going to hit again and Holly just did, did what she did again. And I'm expecting them to hit again. I'm expecting them, but now we know. And that's what I want to say to these sons of bitches. Because you are sons. You're not girls. Even though the three of you pretend to be girls, we know what you are. Your deeds, your nefarious black magic did nothing but cause the friction that the good guys needed to figure some stuff out. So thank you. Thank you.
I heard, I watch reality TV a lot because that's where I like to relax. And somebody wrote a quote. She just got cheated on and she wrote a quote on her Instagram. What doesn't kill me better run. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love Thank you, that. Ariana from Vanderpump Rules. We're going to say what doesn't kill me. So I'm saying this to you to the coven must be very frustrating because man, you have done so much to me, but here I am. And what doesn't kill me better fucking run. <laughs> yeah. They did a uh, attack after that. I think second round, they didn't know it hit him the first time. So the second round I did, they couldn't actually get to me, but they went through a friend who wasn't aware and, and attacked that way. Um, so it was with, kind of, how, how were things with that? Holly, did, did it get straightened out? I, yeah, I, she doesn't know what happened. And I just, I haven't told her. I just sort of cut it off. <laughs> um, well, let's, they do that, don't they? I mean, that's happened to me yeah. too. And Emmy knows that. I have, I've, I've sent Emmy, like, people in your immediate I undid life. what was done. But it, it did take me about a good day to get the, the see, it was our, um, our soul connection went through her to get to me. And then I had to. You know, I felt it in my, it did get to me, but it didn't really, uh, well, either way, I moved it, removed it, but I think I did lose the friendship over it uh, because she's, I know she's not ready to hear what really happened. So I just have to let that go. Well, they do that. They'll use people in your life that you're close to. If they can't, if they can't destroy you, they yeah. try to destroy you through the people that you're the closest to. They've exactly. done that as well. And there are people in my life, their eyes will literally change colors when I, and I know that that like right after that happened where my channel was released, I think I text you because someone I'm close to went ballistic and there was just a day of just, and I was like, Emmy, uh, I mean, Holly, I think I said like Holly's must, it must've worked because they're, they're, they're panicking right now. They, yeah. I think they panic. I think that that's the feeling I get every time they get hit back or their work gets undone. I think that they, yeah. panic. and that's what happens. It's like they, they throw a temper tantrum. And so it's just yeah. like chaos. That second time that I, that I did the, the work for you when you had that happen what i did prior to that is i cut off their connection to their power i the line between them and lucifer and the vatican i might add i cut their power off they've got it back but i cut it off and that's that's that was round two <laughs> Well, and what's so crazy is for them to do these types of things, they have to do like blood rituals. They have to give to Lucifer in order for Lucifer to give to them, which makes me sick to my stomach. Um, so you guys oh, have, to yeah. have discernment over who you are watching. They're telling you who they are in their videos. I'm just going to put it that way. They're telling you who they are. If you're not paying attention and they're really good, the head of this coven is really good at spell casting through her videos. So just be, be aware. Do you feel addicted to these videos? Do you feel like you have to be subservient to this person on your computer screen? All this person. Do you get, do you get glazed over and have to repeat the video because you feel like you didn't get any that glazing over? is like i believe is like a um higher self protection i noticed that i noticed i noticed that and when i talked about it to several other people they're like yeah that happened to me too yeah. so that you know if you find that when you are watching certain channels you get this like almost like you're just off in la la land not paying attention and then you get halfway through the video and you haven't you're like what did they just say and then you start it over. I've, I've done that umpteen times. And, and then I realized that must be, I wonder if that's because um, that's they're point. not good people. That's a good, well, she, and I know this person. So this person will say like, my cards are never wrong. 
they're always wrong. Like if you know who we're talking about, not once has this person gotten anything right with her cards. It's spell casting. This person is using a tool. Tarot itself is not bad. They're using a tool to spell cast you to follow a certain a certain bill. They know the power of thought, you guys. And so that's what it's what the bad guys do on media too. They get you to create an idea of a consciousness of an understanding of truth so that the co collective consciousness goes off the timeline of good. This person also has infiltrated many other people's channels where now this person is people's handlers. There's many people whose sole channel now is with this person. They're now that person. She is now their handler. Good people get tied up with handlers all the time. All right. Just be aware because knowledge is power. You, we are, we have the ability. Thank God we have people like Holly and Emmy that can help us on a very spiritual level. But you as a human being also have the sovereign power to say, nope, turn it off, cut it off. Right. They have tentacles that they put yep. through the zoom. That's exactly what I specialize in removing are those tentacles. And they're kind of my things. <laughs> yeah. And they connect to you, right? So like, like Magdalene and Yashua are regarding my second chakra. There's energy points within everybody's body that give off a certain energy. And that's what they're feeding off of. So don't let them, don't be their McDonald's. business is closed store is closed you know um and then if, of course if you are in a if you need help holly i'm so excited that you've decided to really put yourself out there because you're dr woo woo you're the one that's going to come in and, and help reverse this yeah i also started another service a psychic uncoupling having to do with a lot of us light workers uh when we were not awake were manipulated in such a way to pair us with a narcissist yes. or slash reptilian who fed off our light energy for their prosperity. So um, I was in one of those myself. And on uh, December 2nd, I finally got the last little bit, you know, the legal last part done. And when it was through the process and afterwards I was so calm and at peace and I realized okay I did all the spiritual on connecting to not only this life but I uh, discovered 15 other lifetimes he was that same way in in 15 other lifetimes so that was taken care of as well so I had done all the work except for that legal piece of paper that was the last little bit. And I was so calm and and I've taken back my power and I realized, you know, yet again, I had more connection with others once I shared a little bit about this uh, process and they were like, oh my gosh, I'm in the middle of it right now. Or I still, you know, they're still feeling drained or terrorized and they're not even with that person anymore. And they don't realize, you know, they may be separated, they may be divorced, but have they fully disconnected those energetic cords? And and that has to be looked at. So that's another service I, I do too, the, the psychic uncoupling having to do with relationships. Not only husbands, but boyfriends and friends and family. And, and, and I will say, in this now... And with what we have to accomplish to really come into our power and raise our frequency to the level that we need to be, we have to disconnect all the energetic cords from everyone. Our family, our mom and dad, our kids, everyone. That doesn't mean leave them alone. That doesn't mean not have a relationship with them. Just disconnect the energetic cords, which are draining us like anchors. They're keeping us under the water, let's say, you know, for a visual. And I just recently got that realization. We truly will not be where we need to be as 
the light warriors that we are and to accomplish the missions we came here to accomplish um, with those anchors at our ankles all over, you know? I know we have family we love and I I was told with my husband, which which I just married, he is my true divine soul partner, partner, my literal other half. And I was told by my consciousness that um, I have to, we had numerous lifetimes uh, in the past and that this was the only lifetime that we um, incarnated together where we weren't each other's adversaries. I mean, death, destruction, torture, vile stuff. But this was the first time we were in harmony. So I uh, was told that we have to, and we did it actually last night, but um, remove all past connections that, so that only this now connection between us, because he, we, we make a whole together, you know, energetically. So, um, so even that, um, what a better way to raise the vibration of the entire planet than to find your divine soul partner, your other. And I tell you that wouldn't have happened had I not spent, uh, since I woke up, I was, uh, my soul was overtaken by the cabal. I literally had another soul that was like, like a, this big clamshell um, over my soul, uh, cutting off everything. But the the teeniest minuscule connection uh, to source. And um, from that point on, I did nothing but eat, sleep, and breathe, getting rid of all the layers of suppression and manipulation um, from my life. And I, because of all that work I did, and of course I have a lot of wisdom how to help others through that whole process because I got it. I got away from the Illuminati and Cabal and you name it. I've even been apprehended, apprehended in my dream state by an ancient sect of Vatican black priests for a blood ritual. It was within one minute of the time where he would have had my soul. It was in a cave. It was somewhere over in Europe. And I literally, my consciousness, another part of my consciousness woke up uh, an old friend of mine who was in a dream. I invaded her dream to wake me up. Wake me up. Yeah. yeah. So, so it was like within seconds to midnight they would have. I'm saying they, this because this is so real. This is this is literally what happens. Yeah, they, they they don't play around. No, but they don't play around. This is I you know, I don't say any of this to invoke fear, but I wanna do nothing but impart hope because we won. Our light can overcome anything. I personally, at least twice now, have stood in front of Lucifer himself. I have been in hell. I have been everywhere. And I I don't fear any of them, none of them, because I know I can take them down. I have no problem taking it down. I enjoy taking them down. <laughs> so, well, I, you know. Holly, I, my channel always say, you know, especially to the coven that's been attacking me, me you'll never be as cute as us. We're all, we're, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're going to attack. At least we look cute doing it. You're ugly as hell. Like, you guys are looking rough. So, yeah. I ain't serving. Well, you know, um, and I will say, Holly, I don't know if you've ever heard of the term organic portal. I've had two, I just released two parts on my channel. The Cassiopeians speak about this 
50 percent we were talking about narcissists and us being because i had a narcissist um i know a lot of people are separated from their divine counterpart that's what the darkness does it wants to keep its, its job that's what that's another reason why i've been attacked so much that's another mm. part of it aspect to it um organic mm. portals 50 percent 50% of the human population are considered organic portals. They are pre-Adamic beings, soul beings. So they were here before the Anunnaki came to create Atlantis. So those of us who are not organic portals, we possess all seven chakras. We also have a higher self. We are of the, um, the off-world or bloodlines that mix the pre-Adamic beings that look just like us only have the first three chakras. They don't have higher chakras, so they don't have a higher sense of self. Now, they can eventually evolve into that, but they have to be enveloped by a fourth density positive being in order to do, that, to do so. We can't do it, right? They are controlled by fourth density negative beings. This is all the law of one. So they have no soul contracts they have no higher self they're just like little toddlers kind of bopping around the world and when when a, a being when a the cassiopeians called us sold beings s-o-u-l-e-d not sold as in sold to someone but as actually possessing a full soul we are the higher densities targets so we literally shine like a beacon in the night and if you are a sold being who is living a very inactive life, meaning you're not really pursuing spirituality, you, you're already sold, but you're not really doing things, then, then you kind of, you're not going to run into as many organic portals. But if you're a sold being who is actively pursuing higher states of consciousness, whether that's through healing practices, Reiki, yoga, reading old text, um, even in your dream state, they will be sent into your life by a fourth density negative being, being to try to derail you. They don't even realize they're doing it. So this is what we call like narcissists, right? Is what they're doing. All right. Now, bless their hearts. They don't even realize that's happening. But so when you, the more and more and more you work on yourself, the more and more your vibration goes on the rise. Knowledge is power. Yeah, I agree with Holly. We're not saying this stuff to scare you. We're saying it because you need to be aware because once you understand, you can protect yourself. You can be like, oh, I see what's happening. I see, you know, because the fourth density higher being is trying to feed off of you. They're trying to derail and feed off of you. And so they're sending in these other beings to to do their dirty work, basically. And it's up to you. So, you know, there there are such things as distressed souls, which um, distressed souled beings, which can behave like narcissists sometimes, but they're just dis distressed souls. So that's why we can't really diagnose people. But regardless whether the person's toxic or not, or a uh, soul or an organic portal or not, if they're toxic to you, it's good to learn how to put up a boundary. Because as an, as an empathic person, you're going to want to help. You're going to want to, and they know that. The darkness knows that. They use it to their advantage. So you have to learn to put up that barrier of protection because the more you pursue it, the I mean, look what's happening in the world around us. Just look outside of our backyard. Look at what the cabal's doing, the controllers are doing. They are so desperate, right? right? Like the more humanity rises in vibration, the more desperate they're becoming with these things and all these things that we see, the, the all the riots and everything. They're becoming so desperate, right? When does a rattlesnake rattle? When it's scared. So, yeah. um, so yeah. And I will put the organic portals down in the episodes down in the description box too, guys, in case you missed it so you can go back and rewatch it. The well, lovers. I they send lovers in. That's what I was going to say. The most, the biggest organic portal they'll send into your life is your romantic life. Mm. That's why a lot of us have been with narcissists. <clears throat> I wanted to add when you were speaking of shielding, you, particularly ones like myself, which I know I'm one of those organic, I am an ancient, ancient creator soul. Um, I, I literally can, Rob and I both can create new souls and new, new beings um, together. But 
as far as shielding, you have to use the multiple layers. They attack us in multiple layers in multiple ways, and we have to respond in like. Use your crystals. Like I, in my under my bed, I have uh, two bowls of um, sea salt, and I have um, tourmaline and iron pyrite, and one in each and one you put over under your bed where your head is and one by your feet and you program them to protect. So, you know, that's, that's a more physical and then you can get into energetic. You can go into the color rays. You can actually um, call in a psychic or spiritual guards, guardians to look after you. They're not permanent. They, they come and go, so uh, based on your needs, um, you can call in the angels. You can call on your Merlin-esque connections and use uh, magic, good magic around you, and uh, angelic energy. And, I mean, I use it all. That's that's what in me feels, you know. I am so multi-layered <laughs> in shielding you know, from the inside out. Um, but that's just something we have to do. It's just not a, a one-time thing. And it's not just one type of thing. It's multiple, multiple layers of, of shielding that's needed. And you also mentioned Adamic. And I wanted to share with you, Rob and I, our souls are Adam and Eve. We so are Adam and Eve. So that's the starting point of the good, the good line. Yes. That's and we are, and everything that has been done can be undone. And no limits, no limits. And being in this now as light workers and doing what we're doing, I want to assure everybody as you battle the dark forces that wish to suppress us we are granted karmic free retaliation no holes barred we are free to claim our sovereignty take back our power no karma I'm so glad you said that, Holly, because the person in Australia I was working with as well said the same thing. And the whole time I've been trying to like take it and just give it to the light. But the person in Australia was like, no, they know what they're doing. They're trying to kill you and take your soul essence. Wow. You send it back to them. You return to sender. And yep. so I start. And I, I know Jesse Zaboter, my friend Jesse Zaboter reminded me too, you know, the darkness will use your wounds. And we talk a lot about wounds on this channel because of shadow work and my perception of wounds. And I think Emmy holds the same opinion is they're kind of sacred. They're like your catalyst point. That's the area for your soul to refine itself. But the darkness will use that as an entry point. So what are we talking about? Jealousy, betrayal, these low feel we all have, we all have them. And so every night I always say that I revoke any permission that the darkness thinks it has to use any wounds that I carry known or unknown to me. You can't use them. The minute when I learned that from Jesse, that was a shift too. That was right before I met Holly, there was a shift there. And then when Holly was a bigger, an even bigger shift, but these little things. And if you understand energetic body, it makes sense as to why, because that's the only entry point they have. We were laughing off camera one, and I've said this before, the one, one thing that the darkness cannot do, it can't laugh. Demons don't know how to laugh. Why? Because humor is a high vibrational response. My teachers in India say laughter is the highest point of spirituality. Mm. Right? They can't access us through our, our our kindness they can't access they don't have access to our high vibration they don't have access to the sides of us that are our are, are entry points of compassion or empathy or love true love or hope but those sides of us where there is pain and and abandonment betrayal that's where they go 
that's where they start to try to enter. And so they play, you know, I know that they use a lot of times, uh, like for, I know a lot of the YouTubers they've infiltrated are YouTubers that have issues with like their ego or which is a security in self. And so they're playing on that to keep hold, right? Because that's the only thing they can use. And so once you know, and Holly's right, I think one thing, well, we know the church is part of, of the problem, but I think one thing some of these religions have taught us is that we just say, oh, give it to God and you're fine. Doesn't work that way in spiritual warfare. No. It doesn't work. And there's more, you know, you almost, you have to remember there is the male and female counterpart of source creator, the creator of all. Under that, there are many gods. So you have to be highly specific when you say God is to which one. Because anyone can step in. There are dark gods and there are light gods. I laugh. I remember this time in high school. I don't know why I remember this. I guess sometimes I crack myself up. I don't know. I was having like a a, a a crisis moment. It was probably over a boy because I can't even remember what the problem was. So it was probably over some boy. I remember sitting on my knees in my bedroom and just being like, God, whichever one of, ones of you are available right now, just like who's ever, I guess my young self knew that. I was like, who's ever available? Who is who? Yes. I don't know. Yeah. Like who's ever not on who's ever on call tonight? Um yeah. so I, I I just remembered that um, you know, very dramatic. It was probably a boy <laughs> being that dramatic when I was like So when do we all make it through puberty? Particularly the females, you know? It's it's quite the feat that we actually make it to adulthood in one piece without our parents killing us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the hormones and the fits of rage and oh my gosh. I mean, that's when Magdalene, I was 16 when Magdalene started, auto, I started audibly hearing Magdalene and that's when I had my biggest spiritual attack, which I've talked about my when I literally was hospitalized with scratch marks all over me and my body temperature dropped to like 92 and all of my um, lip nose of my body were swollen. I was tested for like everything under the sun, all sort of cancer, diabetes, doctors could not figure out what was going on. Um, waking up in the middle of the night, could not move my arms and my legs. And my parents literally have to like knock my arms to get movement back into it. At one point, I remember looking at my parents' face. I think they thought I was going to die. I think they thought something was happening. And I just got better. Um, I've, I'll, I'll put that video where I talk about that in the description box below. And after that happened, it shifted me. It, it literally, and I went to a private school. This was when I was a sophomore. And I'm great, even though I hated the school I went to, it was a total cabal school. Um, I am grateful for that moment because I could get my schoolwork sent to the hospital and to my house where I could just do school from my house, basically like homeschooling before that was really a, a in vogue thing to do. Um, and they could count, they counted me in as attendance um, because it was private. So I didn't have to actually check in. And um, I just started to get better just and, and, and I, I'd always seen spirits. I'd always been very sensitive. But after that moment, I was 15 turning 16. I started to really see spirits. And I started to like have psychic knowing. And I uh, used to wake up uh, even after like, bruises, scratch marks. I still have pick. I mean, my boyfriend seen me get out of the shower and just have has watched just scratch marks appear on my back. Um, and I tried to after it shifted my subconscious more than anything. It shifted me. I think just my own inner self at a very young age, I was like, y'all, there's so much more to this than we even know. And so through a lot of college in my early 20s, though, I ignored it and I just wanted to have fun. But I would go to these like tarot card readers and I would go to these, you know, healers and they would always bring it up. Like it would always come up. I would I would never tell them it would always come up. Oh, when you were 15 or a child, you got really sick. Something happened to you. Um, and I'd be like, yeah. And they were like, that was spiritual. And I, and I, I remember at some points I was like, yeah, I kind of figured like that wasn't, it was a physical reaction to something very spiritual that was going on. And, um, um, and so that kind of propelled my, my, um, trajectory in life, which is literally what probably was the catalyst for me ending up in India. And so even though at that age of like 15, 16, going through that at that age was not fun at all, even though I hated the school I was in, not because of my classmates, it was because of the administration. I hated them. Uh, so I preferred being at home. 
Um, I didn't want, you know, as, at 15, 16, you, you want to be with your friends. You don't want to be at home. You want to be hanging out with the boys. You want to be having girls night with your girlfriends. You don't want to be in a hospital bed with your body temperature at 92. Like your soul's literally trying. One of my friends was like, girl, your soul was trying to leave your body. <laughs> she said that to me once. She's like, girl, your soul was trying to leave your body. Um, and that was a friend. This was actually, she's actually recently passed away herself of cancer, but this was probably in our late twenties when she said this to me, but she had been my friend all throughout childhood. And we were kind of rehashing that, that moment in my life. And she goes, yeah, your soul was trying to leave. Like, that's what that looked like when we would see you, we'd come visit you and you were that sick. It looked like your soul was trying to leave your body. Um, and, and that's what, and I think that's why, why I'm sitting here on YouTube with you two ladies today. It's because of that catalyst. And, um, and I think that's why I still get attacked heavily, but you know what, w again, whatever the devil will make for bad, God will use for good. So all of this stuff they throw at us jokes on them because we've just taken it and we've thrived. I've taken everything they've thrown at me and nothing no, it's Teflon. It's Teflon. And I know that pisses them off. I know every, I feel them checking my channel. I know they're pissed that I'm still out there doing my thing. And but we the all need to start speaking our truth. No matter yeah. how woo, woo it is, just get it out there. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yes. And again, and we look cute doing it. My friend Cindy, who is, um, she's she's on my channel from time to time. She owns Sacred Garden Yoga where, where I teach on Sundays. And she comes from a Peruvian line of shamans. And she's like you, Holly. She knows that there's been some bad stuff. And, you know, she's she's a light worker now. But she always has told me, she's all, because she's like you guys. You can talk to her about it. We, we sit there after my class on Sundays and talk about aliens, all sorts of stuff. Um, but she's told me so many times, whether you're practicing light magic or black magic, it always comes through you first. And so people who are practicing black magic, they're going to start looking rough because it's got to go through their vessel first before it, can, it has to come through them. If you're practicing light magic, you're going to start looking beautiful because the light's coming through you before it helps somebody else. You're, you're the vessel. So I say that laughingly, but it's true. The people who are dabbling in the black arts look like hell. They look awful. And those of us who are in the in dabbling in the white art, the light arts, you can tell because they look rested. They look, they have, a, there's a light in their eyes, right? So, and it, and I just love rubbing it into them. <laughs> they look like shit. Love rubbing that in. <laughs> oh, you're on mute, Holly. Uh, excuse me, just one moment. I will be right back. Perfect. I, uh, Emmy, I don't know if I ever told you this, but the head of the coven told me once before I knew she was bad that she was jealous of me. Really? Yeah. Interesting. That was before I knew she was actually feeding off of my life force. <laughs> All right, Holly. So I'm going to go. I think we've been at about an hour now. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Holly, will you s make sure you send me all of your websites, everything, so we can get it up in the description box below so people can reach out to you, contact you. Of course, Emmy's, all of Emmy. Emmy, have you finished your website yet? I'm almost ready. It's 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 the same as my email, Abundant Life Holistic. Um so yes, I will definitely put a video out and let people know when it is finished. And I'm excited. When it's, when it's finished, we're going to do the grand tour debut. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to bring you on and we're going to do a tour of your website when it's finished. So we can, we can get that out there because, um, I mean, that's, that's the, I mean, I remember I said this on enough is enough Thursday night when I did their show, you know, people, some, I said, what, one moment in my woe is me, I was said to someone, I was like, why did we come here not remembering? Like, it's so, so we have to like go through this and figure this shit out. And I was like, why can't we just come here remembering? And the person I was with goes, well, what would the fun be in that? And I love that he said that. What's the fun in that? Like when things get hard and you get in that moment of like, woe is me. Like, why don't I remember just, well, what's the fun in that? This is life is supposed to be lived. And this is part of life. This is part of living is figuring this out. And that's the, that's the point of polarity. You can't know the light until you've known the darkness.
Right. Mm -hmm. and, and I know Earth is like gangster planet. I know out of all the third density planets, Earth is like the most severe when it, because we, we take darkness to like, we are savage when it, we're like, we are like overachievers when it comes to the darkness here on, on planet Earth. But because we're polarity, because there's so much darkness, there's equally that much light. Mm. And that's what we focus on. Didn't the law, doesn't the law of one say that Earth has like a hundredfold the amount of catalysts as other I would be shocked. Cities? I could just see our souls deciding wanting to come to Earth and God and like the angels and our guides being like, sure you want to do this? <laughs> We're like, yeah, okay, have fun. <laughs> I know that firsthand. Um, it was two years ago I discovered I was a walk in and that my original soul um, couldn't stand it anymore. It was a Lyran being, and it only could make it to four years. Four years old is when that I was killed by my father. Thank you, Dad. And uh, that Lyran soul left and um, my walk-in. So I'm a walk-in. <laughs> I know somebody, my boyfriend's a walk-in. He remembers um, at 12 years old, like not feeling any type of emotions until the age of 12. And then he woke up and all of a sudden he felt all this empathy, compassion, grief. And when he, when he was older and started studying walk-ins, he was like, oh, that's what happened. But they say yeah. that for many souls, you don't have to experience. You, that's not your contract is to experience early childhood. And so you can come in later. Um, Lear, and that's where I, apparently my soul is from, um, is from that constellation. So, um, and it's rough. It's hard. And so, again, for all you guys watching, this isn't about Misery Loving Company, but we want you guys to know that you're not alone. There are so many resources out there. Please contact Holly, contact Emmy for any guidance and support you need. Don't be afraid to tell them. Trust me, if you heard the conversations that Emmy and I had offline, you would not be able, you would not be afraid to tell us anything. <laughs> no. yeah, um, we, we've heard it all. We, we've heard it all. We've shared it all. We've, yeah, all the weird shit, all the weird shit. You, you know what? And Holly is even like, a few levels up here with the weird shit. Oh yeah. I'm always <laughs> amazing my local local spiritual group, you know, like, oh that reminds me of. And they're just like their mouths are hanging out there when I'm done sharing my numerous stories of interaction. And, and that's the fun. That's why we're here, right? That's that's fun. That's like my 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 person said like what's the fun in that if we just came to earth to like pay the water bill like what's the fun in that you know <laughs> you know yeah. we have to view it's like in the bhagavad gita krishna tells arjuna to love the work for the sake of the work love it you know when you're being pummeled by this darkness just be like all right what doesn't kill me better fucking run let's let's do this <laughs> i'm gonna yeah. take i'm gonna take your darkness and i'm gonna light a match yeah, I'm, I'm actually but, quite heavily connected to Shiva in the oh, I, Yeah, Shiva. Shiva Shiva's the god of the yogis, the Nataraj. Mm -hmm. the, He's a pistol. He's really quite promiscuous. Yes. No, no. <laughs> Very promiscuous. So if you're ever in India for Shiva Ratri, I will tell you guys, and I'm not a big marijuana person, I, I, that I would rather do shrooms. <laughs> Um, but Shiva is, that's what he does. He's, he does the ganja and, um, and Shiva Ratri, if you're there for Shiva Ratri in India, you will, you will not have to buy because you will just get second and high. It's everywhere. You just smell it everywhere. So, um, his hair is what created the ganja river. Like it's, it's, um, and the one thing I love about the Hindu deities is they're, they're the color blue because as story goes is they suck up the poison. They take the poison for you when you're ready. They're there to set, to help you. And that's the thing too. I love Holly, how you said earlier, like you can call on all these beings that are there. But the thing about yes. the light is that the light respects. Just not the Greek gods. Don't mess with the Greek gods. They're, they're, I, yeah. I just wanted you guys to know, you, you know, you mentioned you, you know, you're from Lyra 
constellation uh, or whatever sector. Um, but you're much more than that. You're not just one thing. No, you're I know. Many, many, many um, origins. And they're really fun to go find them and interact with those parts of yourself. But don't mess with the Greek gods. No. <laughs> I love that. We should do like a, a reality tea, spilling the tea, the drama on the Greek. God. No, just kidding. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it. I I know for a fact I was Rhea, the mother of the Greek gods. But um, I learned that one day when I was went to complain about Neptune and about Aries and and uh, um the Zeus about Aries and Neptune that I was having issues with. And the moment I popped there to stand in front of them, another energy came in and he looked, he kind of leaned in and looked at me and he goes, well, and I went, oh. I'm just kind of the background going, I had to look it up on the internet. Who's mom? You know? <laughs> so, yeah, so Rhea, wife of Kronos. So I, yeah, I've had a lot of interactions with them. <laughs> Not we good. Should do more. We should do more episodes on that. Talk about such... they are the narcissistic gods. I get that. Well, that's Dionysus. That's and we know that. Oh, um... oh, oh, hold that thought. <laughs> Speaking of that. And we know that the so the Anunnaki I've talked about with Atlantis a lot of what we see with the Greek gods and other beings the giants were the Anunnaki were which were half bad half good and that's why Atlantis fell is because the the bad overtook so that's interesting. What's that? Oh, this is the actual horn from Pan and or Dionysus left to me as a gift from my back forest one day, probably close to two and a half years ago. This is his gift to me. I'm like, what do you give these out as presents or what, you know? <laughs> so Rob, my husband actually has a soul connection with Dionysus. Dionysus slash Pan, but uh, yeah, he was in my forest and left me a gift because he wanted to reconnect. This is, <laughs> oops, this is very ancient know. and old, and I scrubbed the heck out of it. It was, it'd been holed up in some secret cave for eons. But this is him. If you can feel the energy, she's held it. <laughs> Emmy's held it. I forgot about that. Yeah, this is his. So you can just see it, you know, kind of like this. And he, yeah, he sheds them, you know, periodically and they just slough off and a new one comes and he saves them. And because, you know, there's energy and DNA yeah. in this and he doesn't want it in the wrong hands. So, um, you know, he holds them up in a secret cave somewhere so they don't get in the wrong hands. But, this is real. This is like my first physical proof, you know, that we're not just talking a bunch of bull. This is this no, thing. and I, I, so a couple years before lockdown, so before I knew anything about where I was doing on YouTube, I got home from Mysore one day, and I've told the story before. And on my front porch, there was a red rose. There was just this red rose, fully bloomed. It had been placed on my front porch at my door and it was so wild. No, it was not from my boyfriend at the time. Like, no, that's what I, no, um, none of my neighbors. I mean, I live in the city guys, like no one's gonna, it's, it's concrete everywhere. And I could not figure out like where I have a picture of it on my Instagram. Like where the hell did this rose come from? It was obviously left purposefully at my door. Well, all these years later, it's been a huge mystery to me. This was right before lockdown. Come to find out, Magdalene's order is the order of the red rose. Not the blue rose, the red rose. 
they wore red capes because demons can't see red. That's how they worked because they were they removed demons. That's what they're they were like a holly, you know, back in the days of of Isis and Osiris, the priestess of Isis and it were the Essenes. And as I'm doing my my um research and I realized like all these and I had no idea that Matt I me mean, Magdalene had been talking to me verbally since I was 16. And I, I don't tell I started talking about I, I don't tell before that I didn't really tell many people that because you don't want to I don't want to go around the yoga world being like, yeah, Magdalene's behind me. She's talking, you know. Um and when I found out it was through some divination and it's been confirmed by other divinations that she left that rose for me because my life was about to change. And I was about to fall back into that, that. She was basically telling me, you're part of the order of the red rose. You always have been through every life. Only this life, it's going to come a little bit late. The understanding is going to come a little bit later into so that rose. And I was just told through another divination I did with my friend, Sarah up in uh, Canada, who's a tea leaf reader. There was, it came up again in the tea leaves. She didn't even, cause she doesn't, you ask her quest Like you ask the question mentally, you don't say it. And then she reads the tea and it came up again that there's going to be another rose appearing soon to be looking out for it. And that was, I got Lovely. goosebumps when she said that because I was like, I never, I mentioned that like once on my channel, like a year ago. And that's like, I, I didn't, the fact that she saw that in the tease and said, Hey, it's, it's going to be coming back again. So guys look for stuff like that. These, the beings that live on the other side of the veil can interact with you and they will interact with you. And they want to both inner earth the elementals, I mean, all of all of what's around us, above, below, and the unseen world around us. Um, at one time, we all lived together in peace and harmony, and they want that again. And they are reaching out to all of us who are able to channel them and communicate. They want us to tell all of the rest of the humanity about them and in they want to be known and welcome back. They don't mean us harm. They want to live in peace with us again because they know the light has already won. So it's safe to come forward now and, and live amongst us and assist us in this last bit of taking down the dark side. So I've said this before. I've told like Magdalene has told me to call her Maggie and people in my channel know that I call her Maggie you can ask her to hug you and she will you will feel the most fierce hug wrapped i mean it makes me it makes me emotional uh, michael will i know from my experience michael will do the same thing um there have been times even as an adult if i'm laying in bed in the past and i've felt sad or or scared or distraught about something and i will just ask for a hug and I will feel just this warm body just mm -hmm. hugging like, like a parent to a child. Yep. You actually physically feel it. They want to support you. Um, yep. But because they, they are of the light, they only come when you when you ask them, when you give consent. Because um, they respect your free will. And I love in the Sophia Code, they say, we watch you with great curiosity. It always makes me emotional. They, they, they say, we watch you with great curiosity. We are, we want, we, we are wanting to be with you just as much as you are wanting to be with us. That is what they say in the Sophia code. They don't judge us. They don't, you know, the church has got us convinced that all these higher beings are judging us for all these mistakes and these sins. All the, the only thing the word sin means is just to miss the mark, to misunderstand who you are, but they love us so much and they want to interact they, they, again, they view us with curiosity. Like we're, you know, it's like a parent when you have a toddler or for me, I'm an aunt and my nephew and niece nieces would like toddle around and like pick up toys and discovering things, you know, they discover their feet and they put their toes in the mouth and we, we think it's so adorable. That's how they see us, which is love and adoration as they watch us with curiosity, as they, they're rooting us on to remember who we are. To yeah. remember, you're in order of the red. You're in the order of the red rose. You are one of us, and we are we are with you. And so, I love that you brought that up. That that um, with the pan, because I think people need to understand that this isn't some just fairy tale. 
they will interact with you if you ask them to. I remember when I was a kid, I, uh, this is how, this was how acquainted with the spiritual our, our world I was when I was like a little kid, like four five, six years old, we would be in like what we called big church, like Sunday school and then big church. We had to go sit in the sanctuary. And it was so, you guys know, it was so boring. Like big church was so boring for a little kid. So I'd always like plan, like I would hold my pee for big church. So at some point I could make my great escape, like, oh. to, <laughs> you know? <laughs> In fairness, my mother, my aunt growing up, my mother's sister always had kidney issues. So if you had to go to the bathroom, my mother was going to let you go to the bathroom. She never like didn't let you go to the bathroom because of that. But there was one time I was like sitting in the stall. I remember my feet didn't even touch the ground, at, you know, and going to the bathroom. I had my pant, my, my stockings rolled out and I was staring at the stall door. I must have been like four or five. And all of a sudden I felt real guilty because I had saved my pee. I figured if I was saving my pee, I wasn't lying. I really had to go to the bathroom, but I'd like saved my pee for church. And I was starting to feel guilty about that. And I was like, dear God, please don't show me the angels. Like I got so scared that these angels were going to come down and like start scolding me for like lying. And I'm not lying, but like saving my pee to go. So that's how, that's how accustomed I was to spirits at like four or five. I was like, don't come down now. Like don't. Aww. <laughs> So, so yeah, cute. yeah. So I mean, and most children, most children see. I mean, think about all the kids. They see stuff. Little kids. They talk to their relatives that have passed away. You just see them talking to them. Dogs, animals see stuff. You know, they're they're all around you, and they want to communicate, but they're not going to do anything that's going to scare you. They're not yeah. going to want to scare you. And so, don't yeah. worry about. It. Don't be that little four year old Bryce thinking that all of a sudden they're going to come down in a mighty way and terrify you because you held your pee. You, know, <laughs> you can also dictate when you want to be connected with. Um, like for years, I crossed tons of souls over lost souls, and they would wake me up in the middle of the night, just, you know, wake up, wake up, you know, and, and I'm like, oh, no, 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 you know, this, let me sleep, I need to sleep. And I'm in a so, human body, I've got to sleep. <laughs> so I just set it up, you know, let's do the first Tuesday of every month at 10 a.m., start gathering, I'll take care of you, you know, just don't wake me up. And so they did, you know, hundreds and thousands, you know, would show up and I'd make That's sure they'd make it out of the matrix and not into the reincarnation cycle. And uh, so they actually got to go back to the conscious collective and source. So that That's was good to know. fun experience. Mm -hmm. So for any souls listening that are out of body, first Tuesday of the month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a while since since they've been coming for me, but um, yeah, I'm I'm here if I they need me. Well, don't be surprised if you get a knock. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now that you put that information out there. Yeah, by the way, if you hear three knocks on your house, a window, or your door, don't open it. Just wait a few minutes. They'll go away. Uh, anybody who does that is not of the light. So just wait because they're the time where the dimension they're from, the time is much faster than it is ours. So just wait a few minutes and they'll go away. Don't don't invite them in. So that's good to know. That too. Three knocks. I think we should do a follow-up episode on some of these things, Holly and Emmy, if you guys are down for it. And, Heck and yeah. I love okay, cool. that. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to ask our, because I'm telling you, Holly, we have the cool, coolest people that watch our shows, don't we, Emmy? Like, our community is, I know we share viewers. Like, we got some really, really cool people who are probably sitting at home going, Thank you for the confirmation. Like they, so I'm going to ask you guys any questions that you have for Holly. I don't care how weird it is. Y'all just ask away down in the comment section. If you feel uncomfortable about putting your question open to the whole um, of YouTube world and you want to be anonymous, send me the question to my email at esotericatlanta at gmail.com and just put Holly in the subject line. I will ask the question on air, but I will keep you anonymous. If that's something you want to be kept anonymous, um, so I'm just going to put that out there because I know some people like their privacy and I respect that. So, so, all right, you guys, well, I know we're a little over an hour now, so I'm going to be putting all of their contact uh, information for both Emmy and Holly, again, down in the description box below. Knowledge is power. 
knowledge protects and knowledge is infinite. You are also not alone. You have support. You are not crazy. Mm -mm. You're not crazy. There is help out there for you. I'm, I'm a living testimony. Holly has worked miracles. So, so you guys, it's out there. And I'm so, thank you. I'm so honored you came on my channel, Holly, to, to do this. And thank you, Emmy, for just being you because you are one of the biggest. And like, I just, I just have to focus again, just so everybody goes, everybody look at Emmy for a second and then look at Holly for a second. Aren't these women, women fucking beautiful? Like I'm oh, telling you, oh, thank white you. workers are always gorgeous. Like they're always drop dead gorgeous. The men, the men are beautiful too. Um, they're always just very good looking people. So I just want to, but that's it's not their physical; it's their gl inner glow coming out of their bodies. You know, that's that's it's just the glow of the light. And so I just want to thank I thank you, two ladies, and I thank you so much for being a part of my life personally, not just on YouTube, but in the personal world as well. And um. For doing this human this human business with me this lifetime divine oh. time divine <laughs> i i am a full believer you know this is happening it was meant to happen so it's the dharma same yep and again lol to the common members it must be real frustrating to be you right now <laughs> so we we'll want to be in your shoes <laughs> so anyway you guys we love you very much keep smiling keep laughing ask for those hugs know that you are here for divine reason your life has purpose your life has meaning it's not always easy if it was easy where would the fun be in that so may i do a light language blessing before we go i would love for you to okay this is from my soul and all of my <laughs> soul aspects for everyone else. Atakutya satya kiansa aturja akiria ansasaria katatia kosya si and chia sarkadia namo sata alatsa tedia onturukitia satati koro ansasa and chia sati e katru eschia sakatiata patira tatira chipucha. Namaste. And so it is. Mm. Thank, Thank you so much. We love you guys. We'll see you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.